welcome to part two where I'm gonna start the details and the final details on this guy. Um, once again, this is a Broadway Limited SW7. In part one, we weathered all of this. And one thing I did forget to mention, um, one really good detail uh, of the weathering pins is this uh, rust colored pen that comes in one of the sets. And I did go back on the trucks and on the couplers and the end hand railing there, if you can see that, and do some of the rust colors that you would usually see and go over some of the details. And that's just some, uh, to bring out some of the highlights that you would see um, where rust would usually occur. But other than that, the weathering's done. Um, I decided not to do the chain detail that you saw in the picture. Um, I do have the chain already pre-painted and everything. Um, the reason I'm not going to do it is because the bottom of this locomotive is metal and I found it really hard to drill into. I was going to pre-drill all the holes to mount the chain, but I decided not to do that. Um, but it'll still look good without it. Um, I've already got all of the parts uh, pre-painted back here. Got the air hoses here. Um, they're already pre-painted. As I mentioned before, the spark arresters came off of another locomotive, so they're already done. And then the little uh, firecracker antenna is ready to go there. So I will get everything pre-drilled and get started so we, you can see uh, the final details on this locomotive. One thing you might wonder, um, what you use to drill uh, holes for the detail parts. I've been asked this question before. Um, I actually have a pin vise set that I'll show you here. There's all the drill bits and here's the pin vise. It's not anything automatic. It's not like a drill or anything. You just turn it manually um, and you load all the drill bits in with the chuck there in the in the front. So it's nothing fancy, um, nothing automatic or anything like that, but it is really useful. Um, some of the drill bits are super, super tiny for some of these really tiny parts like the, the firecracker antenna like I showed you there, and grab irons. Um, as you know, the, the DCNI has the grab irons on the nose above the bell or the GP and SC38. So that's something that I install quite frequently. Um, and the drill bits that I use for that are really, really tiny. So these pin vise sets are a must for just about anything that you do for this kind of modeling. So I would highly recommend that you pick one up. And you can get the even tinier drill bit sets from just about any hobby shop. All right, so I've got the antenna ready to go here. I've already pre-drilled the hole. And as you saw from the prototype photos that I showed you before, the antenna was right about there above the horn. Um, I've got some glue ready to go here on my postcards. And that's what I usually do for smaller detail parts. So I'm just gonna scrape up a little bit on the end of the antenna. You may wanna use tweezers for this, but I'm usually pretty good about getting these right where they need to go. And there you go. As you can see, one detail part down. The next thing I'm going to do is probably the easiest part. It's the spark arresters. And, I don't know how good you're going to be able to see that. Um, there you go. And these just go, they have a little hole in the bottom and they literally just pop right onto the, to the stacks there. I'm going to put a little dab of glue in the bottom. And make sure they're straight on top there. And I find it's 
handy to look at all sides, including top down. And that looks good. And the second one here. So that lines up. Pretty good. Mm, a little hair. All right. And the second detail part is done. Before we went any further, I wanted to show you a picture of the real one again. Um, so we already added the firecracker antenna. We did the spark arresters again. I did the later style. Um, not doing the chain, again, because the frame was metal, I couldn't pull that off. And the next thing we're going to do is this air hose. I, the um, air hose is mounted about midway through this straight line there, um, which is on the model, so that'll make it easier for us to position it because there's really no other uh, reference point other than that. Uh, and that's really the last piece of detail that we have to put on this. Now, I will say that the detail piece, which is right here, it's still on uh, the metal casting. Um, I had to sand that down quite a bit uh, to get it ready to paint. It had a lot of um, flashing on it, so that's ready to go here. And um, I probably will paint it a little bit more brownish because you can see the, the weathering there on the model, or on, excuse me, on the prototype. So I, as soon as I install it, I'll blend it in more with the model itself. Um, but let me get this off of the, the casting and drill a hole and we'll get started on this. Okay, gonna try to show this as best I can. So I have the part here. And do the glue dip as per usual and I've already drilled the hole in the locomotive Just a little more. You can see that very well. There we go. And now we have one air hose installed. I'll do the back now. Okay, I'm gonna try to show this as best I can. So have the part here and I'm gonna do the glue dip as per usual and I've already drilled the hole in the locomotive. There 
just a little more. installed I'll do the back now okay hole is drilled Get some glue on the part I called this the back earlier my apologies this is actually the front show some stills of the locomotive and some better light for you but I hope you have enjoyed detailing and weathering this Broadway limited locomotive in about an evening uh, let me know if you guys want to see more like this or some other things um, some how to's some builds Anything like that that you'd like to see from me, comment, um, Facebook me, anything like that. Just let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will hope to have more for you later. Thanks.